Good afternoon. I'm Mario Preti, gynecologist and oncologist at the Department of Obstetric and Gynecology, University of Torino, Italy. And I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me in this meeting, and in particular, Professor Jacob Borsten for inviting me in this interesting session. We're going to talk about lichen sclerosis resistant to therapy. Lichen sclerosis is a chronic inflammatory skin disease, mainly found in anogenity area, in predominantly in older and postmenopausal women. We have to underline from the beginning of our presentation that untreated lichen sclerosis is associated with a risk of vulvar cancer. The main symptoms are itching and burning, in particular, according to the excoriation of fissuring, so dyspareunia, dysuria, and sexual dysfunction. However, sometimes lichen sclerosis could be asymptomatic, discovered by chance in occasion of routine gynecological examination. It is important to underline this finding. This is the typical picture of well-defined sclerotic plaque in uh, typical vulvar lichen sclerosis. The variation are multiple papal or macular produ producing specular appearance or plaque limited to the labia minora or clit periclitoral area or clitoral hood or sometimes edema in a background of pallor, telangiectasia, purpurea and hemorrhagic blistering. The prevalence of the world population is unknown because, of course, it is underdiagnosed and we have referral bias. We can say that almost 30 women out of the 100,000 women here, older than 55 years, suffer from valva lichen sclerosis. This is the histological picture with the epidermis, often atrophic and uh, a tropic degeneration and homogeneous pale soul of yellinization in the upper dermis. It's important to have a correct biopsy, to have a correct diagnosis. diagnosis. And uh, in particular, when uh, valvular lichen sclerosis has been treated with topical corticosteroid, the biopsy can become not specific and very difficult to diagnose. The treatment goal, well, Cure is not a treatment goal. We have symptom relief, prevent further anatomical changes, reverse sign. A definitive cure for valva lichen sclerosis does not exist as its exact isopathogenesis remain, remain unknown. Due to its progressive course and potential evolution toward cancer, all valva lichen sclerosis cases should be treated even if asymptomatic. And this is underlined by the uh, recent uh, British Association Dermatologist guideline where quality of life, restoration of sexual function and abolition of vulvar risk of cancer are the main aim of the therapy. It is important to educate patients to have general care for vulvar lichen sclerosis patients. Educate that it is a chronic disease, so they have to stop irritant, stop scratching, treat infection, improve skin barrier fun function. And let them know that treatment is not good. Cool. They have to have very, very long time treatment. And which is the ideal treatment. We know that topical corticosteroids are the gold standard for treatment for many inflammatory skin disorders owing to their anti-inflammatory effect and the inducement of specific genes encoding signaling proteins with immunosuppressive action. This propriety make topical corticosteroids particularly well suited for treating an immunomediate inflammatory disorder like vulvar lichen sclerosis. They also exert anti an antipruritic effect. And the current guidelines suggest 12 weeks of treatment, one a day, with either tapering or continuous regimen. 
this is considered the first line treatment where ointment formulation is more effective than cream when hyperkeratosis is present. These are a lot of double blind randomized control strategies that underline the correct function of clobetazole in treatment of valvan like sclerosis. And this evidence based guideline underline this aspect. Of course, clobetazole has a favorable safety profile and tolerability. And uh, uh, we can say that uh, ointment is the best treatment in uh, hyperkeratotic lesion. And uh, a fingertip is the unit measurement. Usually, this fingertip unit is enough to cover the whole valve surface. And uh, up to date, limited evidence on the effective and uh, alternative topical corticosteroid in initial valve like sclerosis is available. The most convincing data on uh, 12 week treatment with a corticosteroid are those related to Mometazone Furoet. This study indicates that. Uh, is a, an effective alternative to super potent topical corticosteroid. And we have also lower potency corticosteroid for mild form of lichen sclerosis. But it is important the maintenance therapy. Lichen sclerosis is a chronic disease and lifelong therapy and follow-up should be maintained. Maintenance therapy should be treated to the lowest dose needed to maintain symptom resolution and sign control. There's scarring, adhesion, and sexual activity. This is a very important study that was published a few hours ago and underlined that among the patient compliant to the therapy, no progression of scarring and uh, adhesion occurred. And symptom resolution was more frequent than partially compliant patient. But the most important aspect is that no cancer occurred during the four year of follow-up in compliant patient. No cancer nor VIN. On the contrary, partially compliant patient seen 4.7% of neoplastic transformation in barbar lichen, lichen sclerosis. It is important to underline that this is uh, one of the uh, first studies that give us this evidence. Treated patients reduce the risk of cancer. And so continuative long-term application of uh, therapy is a set of continuative maintenance therapy using the same molecule or reducing the potency of the agent of shifting to different pharmacologic classes. But it should be proactive even after remission after therapy, maintaining therapy with lower dose and no symptom recurrence, recurrence and reduce of risk of neoplastic degeneration. How long? We can say up to now, lifelong, but in the next year, we probably have more detailed studies. And when there is treatment failure, persistent symptom and active disease for the scaring, fissure, and hyperkeratosis, despite treatment. The first important error, are there compliance problem is patient compliant to therapy, is correct the diagnosis, there are superimposed problems as infection. We have to consider other causes of symptoms. We have to consider allergy to topical corticosteroid, but the most important is to confirm the diagnosis and consider malignancy, in particular when differentiated BIN 
appear in a field of lichen sclerosus. These differentiated VIN have a very short intraepithelial phase, and so it's important to recognize, to diagnose, and treat them. Treat because this is the not HPV related pathway to vulvar cancer. It is important to recognize and treat very quickly them. And this is underlined in another ISSVD paper where is underlined how difficult could be the diagnosis of vulvar differentiated intrapitalia neoplasia. And pathologists should apply this Meyer criteria for agreement, better agreement in diagnosis of differentiated VIN. Because even experienced pathology could be difficult the, the differential dia diagnosis between uh, lichen sclerosus and differentiated VIN. So we have a treatment failure, we excluded uh, no compliance, we excluded the superinfection. We can have the intralesional corticosteroid therapy when efficacy of intralesional steroid injection has been assessed from many years. This is a very old study from Begish and uh, can be used with two milligram intralesional every month, usually with a, a few side effect. And when the lesion get better, we can start again with topical corticosteroid. But as a second line, we have uh, tacrolimus and pimecrolimus are cal calcineurin inhibitor used in a topical preparation in the treatment of atopic dermatitis in V2 or the immunosuppressive activity, topical calcine neurin inhibitor have been assessed in the treatment in many disorders other than dermatitis, such as lichen planus, psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis, lupus erythematosus cutaneus, and cutaneous Crohn disease. The disease, the duration of application vary twice a day and uh, between eight and 24 weeks. We have studied that underline that we have some side effect, but it's in fact effective. But safety of long term use is not studied. And uh, topical retinoid are included among the therapy for the third choice in the treatment of valva lichen sclerosis due to the normalizing action, both to keratinization process and collagen metabolism. Retinoid exert an anti-inflammatory effect as well. Moreover, they have a role in prevention of some skin cancer. Despite this property, retinoid have not become widely accepted in the treatment of valvular lichen sclerosis, probably due, due to their well-known adverse effect and lack of evidence scientific evidence. We have a few study and it seems less effective than ultrapotent corticosteroid, but it could be a third choice in treatment. And then we have Michelanus treatment as oxatomid is a, an antihistamine and anti-inflammatory properties. It's symptomatic treatment only. And uh, Calcipotriol is a, a derivative from uh, vitamin D and the, it is used in dermatology, in dermatology for the treatment of psoriasis. It is safe for long-term application and have a modulation of immune response. So uh, could have a um, good role in the treatment of lichen sclerosis. We have also other preparation with avocado and soybean extract. And uh, the treatment is well tolerated, but we have no data on long-term efficacy and reduction or risk. We have a recent study about 
platelet-rich plasma and adipose derived stem cell infiltration, but the methodological bias, the number of patients included and the lack of standardized intervention and the outcome measure limit the relevance of this study. And these randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study underlie there is no difference between placebo and uh, PRP injection. And we are also we have also physical therapy. We have phototherapy, photodynamic therapy, laser and, and uh, uh, surgery. But physical therapy could be applied as applied as phototherapy. And we have demonstration that is inferior to the gold standard of topical ultrapotent corticosteroid. And photodynamic therapy have good results but is painful, time consuming, it costs. We know that photodynamic therapy act through the conversion in, photo, in metabolic product cated photoporphyrin and uh, single oxygen, but, and this is the histological damage. No long-term result are present. And for laser, we have two types of laser, ablative and non-ablative. This is a consensus paper by the SSVD of two years, years ago, where the level of evidence and the greater reco recommendation for treatment of lichen sclerosis with la ablative laser is very low. And these are interesting study for non-ablative laser, but it's needed a long term for more follow up to state the risk of neoplastic degeneration. Of course, conventional surgery is reserved to the correction of anatomical changes and complication. It's not indicated for varval lichen sclerosis treatment. And so, in conclusion, we have to keep in mind this slide that. Long-term follow-up, we have four-year and uh, half follow-up. In compliant patients, we have no neoplastic transformation. And partially compliant patients to topical ultrapotent corticosteroid are 4.7% at risk to develop intraepithelial or invasive cancer. And this is a slide from our department. We follow it more uh, about uh, 1000 of patients with valvular lichen sclerosis you, we can see that the longer the follow up the higher the risk so it is important to have study with long term follow up as in uh, if we cut the follow up at 2 years we have only 1.2% of progression to neoplasia that increased dramatically over 10 years of follow-up. So please have a long follow-up study to recommend new therapy for valvular lichen sclerosis. Again, thanks for your kind attention.